At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green deck called Vitugazi's Climb as it tries to combine Awakening of Vitugazi with the legendary enchantment Hadana's Climb. So let's read Awakening, a 5 mana instant that says put 9 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target land you control. It becomes a legendary 0-0 elemental creature with haste named Vitugazi and it's still land. Now if we can play this at instant speed on the opponent's end of turn, untap and play Hadana's Climb, which is a 3 mana enchantment that says at the beginning of combat on your turn put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control, then if that creature has 3 or more plus 1 counters on it, transform Hadana's Climb, transforms into Winged Temple of Araska, which is a legendary land, and for 3 mana and tapping the Winged Temple, we can give target creature flying and plus X plus X, where X is its power until end of turn. So imagine having a 9-9 land thanks to Awakening of Vidugazi, which of course has 9 plus 1 counters on it. We untap, play Hadana's Climb, put a 10th plus 1 counter on the land, and now the Hadana's Climb transforms into Winged Temple, and then we can activate Winged Temple on our 10-10 land, give it flying, turn it into a 20-20 until end of turn, and attack for lethal in just one attack. That's kind of what we're trying to achieve in this deck, and that's a powerful combo we have available. Then the rest of the deck consists of some mana creatures, we've got the Explore package with one Wild Growth Walker and Explore Creatures, which of course plays well with Hadana's Climb as well, as well as some instant speed things we can do alongside Awakening, which of course is also an instant, so we can kind of play this draw-go style game where we get to flash in things end of turn to progress our game plan. So let's take a look at our entire list, starting out with our one drops where we've got the full four copies of Lander Elves to let us ramp as soon as turn one. Then at 2 mana we've got the full 4 copies of Incubation Druid, which also plays great alongside Hadana's Climb, because the Incubation Druid normally taps for 1 mana of any color a land we control could produce, but if it has a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, which we can put there with the Hadana's Climb, then it adds 3 mana instead of just 1, so it can accelerate us quite a bit, and of course also has adapt 3 for 5 mana, putting 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Then we've got the Explore package with the full 4 copies of Wild Growth Walker, which accumulates a plus 1 plus 1 counter and gains 3 life when Whenever we explore, we've got the full four copies of Merfolk Branch Walker, which explores when it enters the battlefield, so reveal the top card of our library. If it's a land, it goes into our hand. If it's a non-land card, we can choose to put it in the graveyard or keep it on top of our deck. And then the Branch Walker also picks up a plus one plus one counter, so that can also help us find the different combo pieces by putting useless cards in the graveyard. And then the full four copies of Jade Light Ranger, which explores twice when it enters the battlefield, so very powerful after playing a turn two Wild Growth Walker. And then all those plus one plus one counters play well with Hadana's Climb, since we can transform it even faster so we can start using the Winged Temple to fly over and deal very big chunks of damage. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Wilderness Reclamation, which also plays quite well in this deck, since at the beginning of our end step we get to untap all our lands. Reclamation is not a broken card in our deck, we're not trying to float a lot of mana and cast a big X spell, but it just plays well with all the instants we have available, since of course Awakening is also an instant, so in our turn we can still play some of our creatures and then untap all our lands end of turn, and still have mana available to cast something like an Awakening end of turn. Also, the Awakening itself, once we turn a land into a 9-9 creature, that land will also untap with Wilderness Reclamation, so if we're playing against a creature strategy, being able to give our 9-9 land essentially Vigilance is quite important, since then we can still attack with it, while having it back on defense to protect our life total. And then Reclamation also plays very well with the other 4 drops in the deck, we've got the full 4 copies of Chemist's Insight, which lets us draw 2 cards and also has Jumpstart, so we can recast it from the graveyard, discarding a card from our hand and then exiling the Insight, so we can draw 2 cards once again and get deeper into our deck to find the different combo pieces to try and assemble our 1 hit KO. And then also plays well alongside Frilled Mystic, which is our other 4 mana play that we can play at instant speed thanks to Flash, a 3-2 creature that when it enters the battlefield can counter a target spell. So having access to Reclamation and then having both Insight and Mystic in hand is a great feeling, since if the opponent doesn't play anything worth countering, we can just draw more cards, but if they play something that we have to deal with, we can always flash in a Mystic to counter it. And then our Curve Topper, of course, is four copies of Awakening of Vitugasi. Important to remember that the land becomes a legendary, so we don't want to target two different lands with the Awakening, otherwise we will have to sacrifice one of them, but we can still double up on plus one counters by targeting the same land with a second Awakening of Vitugasi to turn it into an 18-18 instead of just a 9-9 land, so that is something we can do. Or we can always discard additional copies of Awakening to a Campster's Insight if that's what the game calls for. 
And then a mana base is pretty straightforward, 10 forests, 6 islands, and then 4 breeding pools and 4 hinterland harbors. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play and our hand looks pretty solid. We've got all the combo pieces and a wild growth walker as an early play we can make. Do need to hit some more land drops, but between all the lands in the deck and all the explorer creatures, that shouldn't be too big of a problem. It's gonna be a tapped steam vents. Let's run out a wild growth walker. And then we would love for the wild growth walker to stick around, so we can put some counters on it with the Hadana's climb. But even if it dies, it's not a disaster. So we can attack for two. I imagine if our opponent had something like a lava coil, they would have killed the wild growth walker. And now it dodges deafening clarion as well. Of course, the fairy can still bounce it. And the fairy is pretty good against our deck in general, just because we like to play it in some speed. I will put another counter on the wild growth walker, so it dodges deafening clarion. Should the opponent have that. And then we can hope to pressure the fairy with our creatures. Kazmina makes a 2 2 token. That's okay. This might be a bad idea. Alright, so we really want to kill this Teferi, and I think I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna put a counter on the Lanner Elves, and then we can attack both at Teferi to make sure it dies. And they can trade for the 2 2 Elves here. Only time will tell. And now we get to play a Wilderness Reclamation. And this is kind of a dream scenario where we have both Thrilled Mystic and Chemisters in sight. And also the Awakening for the Wombo Combo. Can counter any 5 mana Teferis, any Sarkons the opponent might have. Since it appear to be a Jeskai Super Friends deck. Alright, it's getting countered. Alright, another Awakening. Sadly, we can't cast the Awakening and attack with a 9-9 right away. So we'll just move to combats. Put a counter on the Mystic. We could ignore Kazmina. I think I'm gonna send just a Wild Growth Walker at Kazmina and then the Frilled Mystic at the opponent's face. Opponent's gonna jump to protect her Kazmina. Maybe setting up a Sweeper effect here. And we're just gonna Camster's main face. Wouldn't mind drawing a land, so we can cast this Awakening end of turn. And there we go. So we've got a Wombo combo here. If our opponent taps out for a Sweeper, they're dead. It's gonna be 6 mana for Narset. That's fine. What does it find? So we would love for the opponent to tap out here. Finds Ugin. Although if they tap out for 3 mana to ferry, that's kind of annoying. Alright, it's just gonna be Deafening Clarion. Because if they tap out for 3 mana to ferry, of course, we would have to cast the Awakening in response if we still want to cast it, and then the Fairy can just bounce the land, but now we can just move to combat, put a counter here, transform this, and hit them for 20 to the face. Sweet. Manage to be just guy super friends onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Wild Growth Walker into Hadana's Climb. We've got uh, Chemistry's Inside to help us dig for Awakening. Facing turn 1 Pelt Collector, so green Stompy deck. And there's the Awakening. Alright, so just need to make sure we keep hitting our land drops. And then eventually can try and go over the top. Alright, it's Gruul instead. So we might not see something like Galta. But there. Next turn could be something like a Spellbreaker with haste, which can be quite strong. And Branchwalker also a 3-2, so can attack into our Wild Growth Walker here. And it's gonna be a Domri instead. And I can use Domri to fight and kill Wild Growth Walker. 
All right, Zero Point has a very good start here. One drop, two drop, Planeswalker, kill our creature. They are very much ahead on board. I think we have to play Wild Growth Walker and then hope to draw into an Explorer creature next turn. I don't see us winning this game if we don't affect the board this turn. It's gonna be Domri's Ambush. Hit us for eight. And yeah, I don't see us recovering from this. Is this a Spellbreaker too? Alright, so Pun had an amazing draw. Could have even given the Spellbreaker haste and then we would have died on the spot. But uh, this will still kill us here. Alright, GG's. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand is pretty solid, so we'll keep. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Swamp. Into Dargrav Ghoul, so maybe some sort of zombie tribal deck. And the flying on Hadana's climb is going to be pretty key this game, since our opponent's going to have a lot of creatures on the ground. So it might be difficult to attack on the ground, especially if they can give their creatures death touch with their death baron. We don't want to be attacking on the ground. Alright, Doom the Center. When it dies, makes a 2-2 zombie. So we've got a few options. I think I'm leaning Play Incubation Druid. Plus that Breeding Pool. And then next turn, Hadana's Climb on the Druid is going to generate quite a bit of mana, so we can start unloading our hand. And then we can block the Doom the Center if we wanted to. Just take two for now. And a Veiled Shade. That one, not a zombie. Alright, so we get to do our thing here, and it is worth it to take two here. And then we can play Hadana's Climb, put counter on Incubation Druids, go to our second main, and then we can go Wild Growth plus Branch Walker or Double Wild Growth. I think I like Double Wild Growth here. And then next turn we can play Branch Walker, gaining us maybe 6 life if both walkers are still alive. Vicious Offering kills Wild Growth Walker. And the Veiled Shades can't really threaten an attack here. So they could have considered attacking first and then casting the removal spell. Another Incubation Druid means more mana, but we don't have much to do with all that mana at the moment. Let's lead with the Branch Walker, see what we can explore into. Just a land. So we can't quite transform the Hadana's Climb yet. Just play Incubation Druid for now. And I think we'll put a counter on the Branch Walker. Next turn we can adapt Incubation Druid and flip the Hadana's Climb if we want to. There we see Death Baron, and now we've got a 3-2 Branch Walker that can trade for one of these 3-3 three, three creatures the opponent has. And take 3, seems fine. And there's the Awakening, perfect. And do we have enough mana to kill our opponent on the spot? 5, we should have. So if we take 2, tap this for 3 green. Then we'll tap two more. Our land, of course, does have haste. Move to combat, put a counter on this, transform the Winged Temple, and then we still have enough mana to uh, give this flying. Didn't even have to play our shock land here since we still had the Incubation Druid. But yeah, that's 20 out of nowhere. And that's game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable enough. Up against a red black. Let's attack for one. Play our Wild Growth Walker.
I remember a YouTube channel by the same name that used to make magic videos on YouTube. That definitely got me into making videos myself, so that's a nice coincidence here. Not in a hurry to play the other branch walker since we can still hit our land drop for now. So I think I'll play another wild growth walker first. Say go. And then next turn we can start getting some life back. Fourth land untapped for rekindling Phoenix. Phoenix could definitely be an issue since that can block our flying awakening. Can just go for a Jade Light here. Pick up two lands. Gain a ton of life. And we can even try and sneak in an attack for three here. Which could be worth it. Yeah, why not? Next turn we can play Branch Walker, grow the Wild Growth Walkers even more. Or we can decide to keep up Mystic and Awakening at the same time. Second Phoenix, alright. Now they could maybe try and double block the Wild Growth Walkers with Phoenix and Chain Whirler. Another Jade Light of the top is definitely pretty strong. So we'll just play all the Explorer creatures here. And we'll keep that one on top. And then we're relatively safe to attack, since even a double block doesn't kill the Wild Growth Walkers. Question is, do we attack with the Jade Light? I don't think we quite do. Just send these two, and then one gets chum blocked by the Phoenix, they take six. So if we would send the Jade Light, it would just die to the Chain Whirler. And our opponent's just gonna have to concede here. Too much value from these Wild Growth Walkers. But we also had the Wombo Combo in hand. Alright, we're on the play with another reasonable draw. A lot of mana acceleration, nothing to ramp into currently, but we can look for it with the Branch Walker. And now if one of our mana elves dies, it's not a disaster. Alright, Wild Growth Walker is not a bad one. Facing Eternal and Hallowed Fountain. Probably not a White Weenie deck splashing blue, since they would probably have a 1-drop to play. So more likely Asper midrange or control. So overextending into a Kai's Wrath is always a concern. I think I'm just gonna run out a Wild Growth Walker instead of the Incubation Druid since we don't necessarily need more mana. And then next turn we can double Branch Walker if we feel like it. All right, it's gonna be Hero Precinct 1, so Asper midrange confirmed. All those tokens on the ground are gonna be problematic. So definitely match up where Finding or Winged Temple is gonna be important. For now we can just play some branch walkers. Find a couple lands. Attack for three. So cards we want to find include Chemister's Insights. Frilled Mystic would be decent. Hadana's Climb. Deputy is gonna get rid of both our branch walkers. It's a bit of a risky play if we had a way to get rid of the deputy, but being blue green, we don't have much in the way of removal. So I don't mind attacking with wild growth walker. Might see a chum block. Opponent just takes it for now. And then we can deploy our hand. Since Asper midrange is not gonna have any chaos wraths in the main, most likely. So now we've got a ton of mana for when we eventually hope to find something along the lines of Chemistry's Insight. Can discard some of these extra lands we don't need anymore. And then hope to take to the skies with the transformed Hadana's Climb. Three mana Teferi is definitely an annoying card to face with our deck since we would like to play it instant speed. And it can bounce our Awakening of V2 Gassi, unlike five mana Teferi, which specifies non-land. Three mana Teferi can bounce any creature, including creatures that are lands gets in there with everyone so they let us trade for the hero if we want to block with both laterals which probably implies they have an instant speed removal spell to kill one of them so that doesn't seem worth it just block here and then take three
Right, hostage taker is gonna take the wild growth walker. That's okay. Another wild growth walker. So if we play this here, we can still adapt the incubation druid. I'll play out one more land, but we might want to keep this in hand for jumpstart. So they don't have any attacks on the ground unless they have instant speed removal for the incubation druid. And from their attack with the hero last turn, I would be surprised if they don't. They're going to play another hero main phase one, so this implies they have a Tyrant's Scorn in hand to deal with the Incubation Druid. And they just want to get an extra token. But if they use a Tyrant's Scorn on Incubation Druid, at least they're not using it on Awakening of V2 Gas. Your opponent's not even going to bother attacking, so maybe they don't have it after all. Or we will see their response. Alright, Tyrant's Scorn killing Incubation Druid. Make a few tokens. And it's not looking good for us, unless we can find one of the aforementioned cards. Another Incubation Druid can make the same play as last turn. Keep land in hand also makes them maybe play a Thought Erasure. Just finding a land they can't take. But this army of 1-1 tokens is starting to add up. So even finding an Awakening without the Hadana's Climb wouldn't help us much. There's a 3 mana Teferi. Which can bounce Incubation Druid if they want to. Should have definitely tapped both our forests to represent having a Frilled Mystic in hand at least. Decides to bounce a Wild Growth Walker, maybe a Thought Erasure to take it away. Afterwards here. That would make sense. Yep. Alright, but we still have our 3-5 Incubation Druid on defense, so... I don't think we will see any attacks. Alright, never mind. So... We get to block, and then... Activate Incubation Druids. And we get to explore some more. Jade Light doesn't cut it here. And there's a the Chemisters. Alright, let's go digging. Shade Lights doesn't quite do it here. Hadana's Climb here would have been quite excellent since we could have transformed it right away thanks to the Incubation Druid already having 3 plus 1 counters. And I think we're jumpstarting the Chemisters before playing the Jade Lights. Of course I have to do it now because of Teferi. Discarding Islands. Pick up some more lands, not what we wanted. So, I think we're just playing a Jade Light here. And try and find that Hadana's Climb. Reclamation doesn't do much at the moment. Awakening also doesn't do it by itself. Just have to say go, and our opponent might even be able to kill us just by attacking with everyone over the course of two turns. Soren giving everything a lifelink now as well. Can also get back the deputy from the graveyard, exiling our branch walkers. And I don't really see us winning this game anymore. The matchup mostly hinges on finding Hadana's climb and transforming it as soon as possible. If we can do that, we can give the opponent a hard time since we can pressure their planeswalkers with our flyers. If we don't find one of our copies of Hadana's climb and our opponent gets a hero to get out of hand, it's going to be difficult for us to pressure them. Let's play another branch walker. Jade Light goes to the graveyard. I'm just gonna pass a turn here. No good attacks. Surin gets back deputy, exiles all the branch walkers. This might be a bad idea. Narset as well. And the Liliana, so opponent definitely going big with a lot of Planeswalkers. We can cast Awakening to make a 9-9, but it's not going to do anything against all these tokens. I think we just keep it in hand 
and then hope to wombo combo if we top deck Hadana's climb. But of course, keeping it in hand is also vulnerable to a potential Thought Erasure, but they also have just a fairy they can minus to bounce or land, so. Yeah, they can just mortify and then attack with everyone. And we will be very much dead. Opponent on taps. Narset minuses. We went through almost half our deck but couldn't find our Hadana's climb. Opponent did have a mortify so they would have been able to answer it regardless. And now Liliana, for good measure. They can minus, sack two tokens, or they can just attack first. Well, if they're not attacking with everyone, then maybe we get another turn. But our opponent, I guess, is also just gaining 13, so even 20 damage from Awakening out of nowhere wouldn't be enough to kill them. But uh, might as well try and survive. So this game should be over. Liliana makes a zombie. The fairy pluses. Oh, never mind. Our opponent already activated Cern apparently. Regardless, our draw was not a Hadana's Climb. Plus, we also wouldn't have had the mana to play Hadana's Climb and Awakening and activate Winged Temple in the same turn. So we are dead. GG's. Alright, we're on the play, hand looks reasonable. Turn 1, Lunar Elves, and then turn 2 we can decide between a Hadana's Climb or a Wild Growth Walker. Probably gonna lean towards playing the Walker first. And even have a Frilled Mystic next turn, so pretty good start. Although we don't have anything else to do at instant speed alongside a Frilled Mystic. Which makes it a little more awkward than if we had like a Chemist's Insight. Alright, and now at least we get to sell the fact that we might not have anything. Because the elf could not attack into the Electromancer and we would need the elf to cast a Frilled Mystic in the first place. Could have also decided to play the Hadana's Climb anyway here. But I think we'll keep up the Mystic, try and disrupt their turn here. And then next turn maybe play Hadana's Climb plus Wild Growth Walker. Alright, that's a fine one to counter. Opponent cast Radical Idea in response. They could get back an Arclight Phoenix if they jumpstart a Radical Idea here. And that's what they do. Alright, it's too bad. Let's see if the Phoenix gets in there. It does. And the Electromancer as well, that's a bit of a weird attack. Could imply they have a second Electromancer, which is why they're okay trading it for a Frilled Mystic. But I think we can just try and raise somewhat. Incubation Druid as well. Could go Druid plus Adana's Climb. Put a counter on the Druid. But there's nothing we need all that mana for. So I would rather make a bigger creature with the Adana's Climb somewhere else. Let's go Adana's Climb. Could put the counter on the Frilled Mystic. Or on the Wild Growth Walker. Not sure which one. Do we want to flip this Adana's Climb as soon as possible? Then we maybe put it on the Wild Growth Walker. In case we pick up some Explorer creatures. And that way if they spend another Lava Coil on the Wild Growth Walker, we have a bigger Frilled Mystic to deal more damage. Not a radical idea. Hopefully they don't have a second Arclight Phoenix to get back. Because that would be an issue. Tormenting Voice discards Islands. Fair enough. Could have definitely been worth it to trade Mystic for Electromancer, since Electromancer is a scary card. But because they offered a trade, I'm probably thinking they have a second Electromancer, which means that trading for the first one isn't as impactful. Phoenix does get in there. They could keep it back on defense. 
And the discovery... Sequencing is a little weird since I could have found another Phoenix with the Surveil too. And a chart of course to just draw two after attacking explains why they did one attack. Alright, now a Chemist's Insight means we can leverage the man advantage that the Incubation Druid could provide. Although if we play Incubation Druid we can no longer cast Insight, so we probably want to Insight first, see what we draw. If we draw land we can still play Incubation Druid. If we draw land plus Explorer Creature we could also run that out instead it's Lander Elves plus a Branch Walker. Hitting a land instead of a Lander Elves would have been a big deal. So now we could put the counter on Mystic so it can attack past the Electromancer. And we'll send these two. And the Branch Walker next turn is going to be a big deal. Sahili now. So by exploring with a branch walker and putting an extra counter on the 2-4 wild growth walker we could flip the Hadana's climb. So we can try and pressure the Sahili or just try and kill our opponent. But I imagine the Phoenix is gonna stay on defense this time. Opponent draws a lot more cards here. But the Phoenix still attacks. So no respect for the Hadana's climb. Incubation Druid can go to the graveyard. Move to combats. And then we don't have to give the Wild Growth Walker flying, we could also give it a Frill Mystic flying. And that's just lethal, but any one of them would be an 8 powered flyer here. So I can just go face. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, no blue mana yet, but with all the explorer we can probably find some blue mana, and we don't have use for blue mana at the moment. Can decide between a turn 2 Jade Light Ranger if the elf survives, or play Druid to add more mana. Um, I think it works out better if we play the Jade Light here. Put that in the graveyard, and put that in the graveyard as well. We only need a single island with Incubation Druid to cast a Mystic, but I would rather just find lands. Alright, no lands found, so I think we want to lead with the Jade Light to make sure we hit our land drops. Can attack first. If we did hit a land, then we could have gone double Incubation Druid. But I'm kind of all in on finding a land of the Explorer triggers here. Alright, Hadana's Climb. Still no blue mana though is the issue. But it would play well alongside our Awakening of course. And I guess a mono green deck going over the top with flying is a good idea, so I think I'm tempted to keep this still. And then next turn we can drop some Incubation Druids. And then Wilderness Reclamation plays well alongside Awakening and Insight. Opponent playing blue as well. So let's go ahead and attack with Jade Light and Jade Light. Opponent takes it. Opponent only has access to single blue, so we don't have to fear an opposing Frilled Mystic. Just play an Incubation Druid. It's gonna be Growth Spiral. Puts Breeding Pool into play. Alright, I mean, next turn we could also just attack with a hasty Awakening. If our opponent taps out, he could be dead. And there's also the threat of activation on the Adapt from Incubation Druids. There's a Forest, so we can force them to Chum Block at the very least, which I guess is fine. So we'll just cast the Awakening, targeting a Forest, the Auto Tapper. Luckily pretty good at dealing with V2 Gazi. So these can get in there, opponent's forced to block here, otherwise they're dead. And take 7. And we'll see how they deal with this. They could have some sort of entrancing melody to steal our creature, that's pretty good.
We were hoping to find an island so we could just fly over for the win. But I guess this works too. If we attack with these, this can adapt. So if we attack with all these, the incubation druid can still adapt thanks to the other incubation druid. And the laterals plus a three pound creature connecting is lethal. So this should be game. Alright, sweet. Sometimes just a hasty 9-9 nine -nine is good enough. Alright. That's gonna do it for today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.